Are you applying to college and are you wondering how you can totally up your activities game on your college application? This video is for you. I'm gonna talk in this video about what I would consider the number one wow activity that most any student can use to impress colleges and how anybody out there can actually do something that can help them make their mark and help them be a little bit different and stand out in college admissions. If you're wondering who I am, my name is Brooke. I'm an independent college consultant. I've been working in this space for over a decade and a half, almost two decades now. I've also been a prep coach for the SAT and the ACT. During that time, I've scored perfectly on both and as an adult, more importantly, I've prepped people to perfect scores on both tests. You can check out our online courses at supertutortv.com where I share all the awesome stuff that I know about that. And I've got a couple of books on Amazon for the ACT math section if you happen to be prepping for that. Support our channel, get our books, that would be awesome. You can also leave us some love if you happen to use them and like them. And you can subscribe to our channel and follow us on all sorts of social media, including TikTok, our latest social media foray. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so let's get into this video. So I know college admissions and activities are really frustrating to a lot of you because like when I was in high school, life was easier. I'm just gonna be honest. Like all you kind of had to do was typical activities and just be the best at them, right? You get straight A's, boom. Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Stanford, wherever you wanna go. Open doors, ta-da. And while that's still true for some people in some groups, right? If you're from an underrepresented state, Hey there, Wyoming and Montana. Or if you're from an underrepresented minority, doing that kind of stuff is enough, right? But for the rest of us, how do you stand out? And the answer that I know you all are waiting for is some people call it a spike factor. Some people call it a passion project. But whatever you call it, it's doing an activity that is your own passion activity, right? Your sort of self-created passion activity or passion project, so to speak. That to me is this number one wow activity. Now I'm telling you, this isn't always easy. And if it were easy, it would be something everybody was doing. The reason that it helps students stand out is that not everybody is doing it. And so that's what makes it really cool. So what is it? How do you do this? How do you make this happen? To get that passion project kind of activity, what I'm talking about is an activity that doesn't exist at your high school. So all of you international students who are like, I don't have any activities in my high school, how will I ever get in? Stop worrying, okay? This is the one activity that everybody can do and that's what's so groundbreakingly wonderful about it. It basically is the idea that you're going to take on an activity that you make up yourself that is based on things that you enjoy doing, topics that you're really into, and you're going to craft your own independent kind of activity around that. This can take a lot of different shapes and forms, depending on what it is that you personally are interested in. When it comes to passion projects, not all passion projects are created the same, and not all of them are as impressive as you think they might be, okay? So, Let's go through the factors that make it up. And then I'm gonna give you guys some examples because I know some of you are like, well, what passion project could I do? So I'm gonna give you as many examples as I can. So in terms of the factors that you should think about when you're trying to design your independent project, you have to ask yourself some questions. The first question is, does this reflect my passion? And is this something I'm interested in long-term? In general, a passion project is going to be better when it reflects real ideas that you're interested in. I'll give you an example. I've had probably at least five or six students that I've tutored write about their Rubik's Cube skills and how they're really good at Rubik's Cubes. I had one of my students actually do an independent project based on Rubik's Cubing, but I would say his passion project wasn't as strong as some of my other students because it's kind of at the bottom of it pointless and there's no value system behind it and I don't quite understand why somebody who does something that's like really randomly impressive with a Rubik's cube is like the next leader of the new world. So watch it on your passion project. You want to make sure whatever you're doing has significance. And by significance, I mean it probably in some way taps into your value system. Which brings me to the second thing. One of the things that you can do to make your passion project really awesome is reveal a way that you can solve a problem in the world around you. If you can solve a real problem, a real human problem that adults deal with, that's impressive, okay? Maybe the problem is COVID-19 itself. I read a story about one kid who went door to door and created a task force to help elderly people sign up for vaccines for COVID-19. Other things I've had students do, medical research, 
is there a medical problem that you could help research a solution for? And when I say research a solution for, can you do something that might reach beyond just building a foot brace for your mom when her ankle hurts? When I look at solving a problem, ideally your solution should be scalable. What do I mean by scalable? Well, I had several students that I worked with this year and a couple of my students got in early to top 10 universities. And those young women who got in early to their top 10 universities both had personal projects that were scalable, meaning the scale of what they did could have repercussions that impact more people than just one person in front of them. They designed something or created something or did research on something that it was bigger than themselves, it was bigger than their grandma, it was something that would impact potentially more lives. So if you have a single human being who has a problem, and maybe that's biological or maybe that's medical or maybe it is whatever it is, and you have a product or something that you create for them or a wheelchair or a crutch or whatever it is that you're designing to help your friend or your grandmother or some sort of walking device, whatever it is, but you only make one of them and you just make it for your grandmother, that's less impressive than if you do some research into a particular strain of Alzheimer's disease and you're ready to publish a paper on it, okay? Cool. Next point is your passion project should reveal how you are dedicated to what you do and you've got to make efforts and go the extra mile and be somehow impressive. The other kind of passion project that isn't quite as impressive is one that it feels like somebody helped you out a heck of a lot and that person might be a parent or that person might be a, you know, a brother or sister or some professional that you already know. I want you to make effort. I want you to be impressive. I want you to do the work and you have to own it. It has to be your work, not just your idea that then you pawn off to other people to do. Cool. The next thing is that your idea should be original. I know it's hard for you guys sometimes to know what's original and what isn't, but on the whole, there should be something to it that isn't just regurgitating what other people did. You want it to have a mark of zing, a mark of creativity, and a little bit of, I haven't ever heard of somebody that's done that before. That's pretty darn cool. What's the angle that makes it unique? What's the angle that makes it unique to you? So if you're going to build an AI engine, don't just build an artificial intelligence engine that can identify cats on the internet. Everybody's done that before. I've seen it a hundred times. You're just repeating something somebody else did. I want you to do something that's a little bit original, that's in your voice. If you're gonna do an AI project, apply that AI to something that maybe other people haven't applied it to, or find some real world data set that you're going to use it on and try to create something that's a little bit more significant and original. And then finally, your passion project should reveal your leadership in some way. What I'm asking you guys to do is to set off on your own and design some kind of project or instigate some kind of endeavor that is outside of school, that is going to require you to step up and do something or create something that wouldn't exist if it weren't for you. It could mean you maybe had to contact 100 different researchers to try to understand how to do what you're doing or get yourself a mentor. Leadership can be stepping up, talking to other people, making alliances, building ideas on joint values, on things that matter and making a difference in that way. Whatever it is that your passion project ends up being, at the end of the day, you wanna do something that matters and if you can, you can be a real standout. So what are some examples of some passion projects that you could do depending on your interests? Well, we can start with science. Science is kind of an easy one. If you wanna make a difference in science, typically students can do that by either inventing something or researching something. You can also try to win awards and things like that and that can be impressive as well. But the way that you tell your story is going to be more impressive than how many awards you win. If you're a musician, a wow activity might be composing music of some sort that actually gains traction. If you are into writing, you could make it a New Year's resolution that you're gonna write a short story every month and submit it to as many literary journals as you can, to 10 literary journals. And so by the time college applications roll around, maybe you've been published in six different literary journals. That would be super cool, right? Let's say there was an incidence of bullying at your school. Maybe you're somebody who's gonna step up and create a task force and work to overcome that kind of zeitgeisty topic. Maybe you were a victim of bullying and you decide you're gonna start booking speaking engagements at elementary schools to tell kids about how they can stop getting bullied. That's also kind of a cool passion project. If you are an athlete, 
you could try to spread your athletic prowess to people in your community in some way. That could be creating a league of soccer for underprivileged youth in your area. If you want to be a filmmaker, can you use your iPhone and make a documentary using your iPhone and stitch it together and get people to watch it and build an audience for it? That would be impressive. I've had students who try to tackle environmental issues. I've had students who've tackled issues in their school. I've had people who hop on the Me Too bandwagon and try to address that. Whatever you do, if you can hop onto a wave of zeitgeist, what is the media talking about today? What are adults struggling with trying to solve? If you can help try to solve some of those problems in your world and it's scalable in some way because the ideas that you're putting forward are actually going to work on a bigger scale, that's pretty cool. And that's something worth doing and worth trying. I know this can seem daunting. I know it can seem like, Brooke, how the heck am I going to get this? But it's something that if you've got time, if you're a freshman, if you're a sophomore, you have time to think about it. And even if you're a junior, you have this summer and you can ask yourself, is there a project that I could engage with, that I could jumpstart, that I could be the instigator of? And that's just what you have to ask yourself. Now, the other thing that I'm going to say is there's a lot of different paths to getting into great colleges and universities. And finally, there's a lot of different great colleges and universities. Just because you don't have a crazy wow factor that gets you into Harvard doesn't mean that you're not worthy of going to a great college. If you have great grades and you do well with your activities, you're going to get into some college somewhere and you're going to do okay. And everything will equal out at the end of the day. That's what studies show. So I don't want you guys to freak out about this. Please don't stress out. But if you want to throw another coin in the well, in your wishing well of college and university admissions, coming up with a sort of passion project, some sort of factor that makes you stand out and unique, I encourage you guys to do that. I encourage you guys to try to find ways that you can make an impact in your world today and that you can make a difference and solve problems. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.